Hello again in this video clip series, My Journey to God in a Very Secularized World. This should be video clip number 80. Continuing with my letter to all the priests of Perugia for Christmas on 2020. I, I again repeated to them that I, in other articles to try to, to try to help them realize that, you know, that the truth comes from God, not from the world or the church. And so I, I wrote to them that, you know, if I realize that the truth comes from God, not from me, and I have a little bit of virtue, especially humility, I should be willing to listen to someone who says to me that what I wrote or said is not in harmony with what God has revealed to us throughout human history, called divine revelation, while quoting documents of the church. But if I believe or feel that the truth comes from me, I will not be willing to dialogue with anyone not in agreement with me, as have done all the dictators in the history of the world. By throwing out the precious laws of God, we quickly go toward might makes right, as it is in hell. Why is there no dialogue today with the cardinals, bishops, priests, and lay people who tell us that we must remain faithful to the truth of God revealed in all the centuries, the truth that does not change with the world. If we believe to be so intelligent and enlightened today in the modern church, to be able to finally interpret all of divine revelation in the right way, why are we so afraid to dialogue with those who clearly and simply explain to us certain profound and radical breaks with divine revelation through time? As Jesus said, for everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed the light is jesus the light is the truth in this period of the great tribulation the church will enter the glory of the kingdom only through this final passover when she will follow her lord in his death and resurrection and but our lady told us that in the end my immaculate heart will triumph in, uh, in Fatima, there will be filled the Proto Evangelum, Genesis 3:15. That quote I had before was from the from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, uh, number 375 to 377. Because God has chosen the handmaid of the Lord, Mary, His immaculate Mother, to crush the proud head of the ancient serpent and his followers. <coughs> And to be the general, you might say with 12 stars, in this cosmic battle against the great red dragon, Revelations 12, 1-3. Our Lady continually tells us to consecrate ourselves to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and live this consecration of obedience and total trust in our Heavenly Mother. This is the moment for all to take refuge in me because I am the Ark of the Covenant, Our Lady says. And she says, continues, At the time of Noah, immediately before the flood, those whom the Lord had destined to survive his terrible chastisement entered into the ark. In these your times, I am inviting all my beloved children to enter into the ark of the new covenant, which I have built in my immaculate heart for you, that they may be assisted by me to carry the bloody burden of the great trial which precedes the coming of the day of the Lord. This was Our Lady to Gobi, and, and that you can find in the book, To the Priests, Our Lady's Beloved Sons. And this message was July 30th, 1986. I also wrote to them, if you might like to use the consecration formula of Our Lady uh, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, you can find that also in the, in the, in the, in the, at the end of the messages of, Go, of Gobi. And I repeated to uh, the, the priests again, just because to help them not lose their faith, I, I told them again what Padre Peel said, that it would be easier for the world to survive without the sun than to do so without the Holy Mass. The saint also said the rosary is a weapon for these times. And a good confession, a sacrament, is more powerful than an exorcism, a sacramental. So I ended in my letter to them, saying to them, Best wishes for a holy Christmas with baby Jesus, 
Mary and Joseph. Give great joy to baby Jesus for his birthday, not ours, by spending time before him in the tabernacle with the Holy Rosary, since this baby Jesus loves each one of us immensely. He suffers immensely due to our lack of faith and our great indifference. As pastors, we must give a very important gift to baby Jesus by protecting the precious immortal souls for which he came to die for. Baby Jesus died for me. I pray that I might be ready to do the same for Jesus and for his mystical body of the church if he offers me the gift of martyrdom in this period of the great tribulation and of the great apostasy before the manifestation of the Antichrist. With the help of humble adoration of our Eucharistic baby Jesus with Mary, I hope our eyes will be open enough to realize that what will happen in the year very soon is not by chance but has been well programmed for many years for the world and for the church. Talking by the, 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 the St. Gallen group, the cardinals who plotted to, to uh, force Pope, Pope Benedict to get out. I, I also wrote in, in this that uh, Pope John Paul II reminded us in his encyclical Ecclesia de Eucharistia there can be no danger of excess in our care for this mystery, for in this sacrament is recapitulated the whole mystery of salvation. Because as you know, many priests no longer have humility and reverence before the Eucharist. Because God commanded Moses to maintain great reverence before the Ark of the Covenant. How much more reverence should we have before the real and personal presence of our infinite Lord in the Holy Eucharist? I was very impressed in February 1989 at Monte Migliore when I was there as a religious when I saw Mother Teresa of Calcutta and Lark founder Jean Vanier bowing down to the ground during the consecration of the Holy Mass. So, my dear brothers, I, that I end, ended the letter here. Please pray for priests and bishops because of the first target of the devil. No priest goes to hell alone and no priest goes to heaven alone. Don't judge them, but pray for them. That's the best thing to do as Our Lady tells us. May God bless you and Mary guide you.